Well, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve, and today we're going to be talking about using these little film canister pinhole cameras that I made. Um, and we're, I'm going to take them out in the field and uh, kind of try to get some pictures with them. So if you've seen the last two videos I've done about photography, um, one of them was making high quality brass pinholes, which is what's in here. And the other video was about how I kind of made these uh, film canister cameras with uh, just, of course, a quarter inch hole in the side of the camera, a piece of brass taped to the inside with gaffer's tape, the lid with, with magnets on it um, to hold it to the metal base on the tripod, and a little label on the, f on the back end of the cap to tell what the number is. And I'm using a simple electrical tape shutter on these nine cameras. And, uh, they're in a little box here that I take with me. Um, so today I went out and with my backpack that had the camera in it, my light meter, uh, my little notebook for making notes, and uh, basically that was all I needed, I think. Uh, and I went out and took some pictures and it was kind of interesting. Well, hey, good morning. This is Joe Van Cleve. Uh, today we're gonna take our nine pinhole camera film canister kit out and we're gonna take some pinhole camera shots with Harman direct positive paper. So here I am getting the canister camera set up on its magnetic base. We're going to be shooting a shot of the tree right there. So this is one of our shots we're taking. Well, so I'm interested in taking a shot of this big old tree with this building, this house behind it. We're in McDuffie Park, Hidden Park in Albuquerque. We're going to see how this works out with the pinhole shots. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my Luna Pro F Gaussian light meter set to ISO of 8 and I'm uh, exposing uh, the light meter relative to F128. Whatever. The challenge of this kind of photography is that these prints are very small, an inch and three quarter square or so. So the compositions have to work well with kind of a small print size. It's stuff like this artwork that I'm interested in uh, documenting with this pinhole. It's urban art, urban culture that is so interesting around here in Albuquerque. Even the uh, film production places like this field and frame, and frame are really interesting uh, as buildings in the otherwise kind of an artsy neighborhood of Albuquerque. Well, it's murals like this that are also interesting. The challenge on this one, though, is it's so dark. My meter said 45, over 45 seconds. I did 40 seconds. We'll have to see if it's going to be over underexposed or not. Well, this represents the last of the shots, the nine shots, and uh, I'm going to have to go home and develop these and see how they came out. I have a question about a few of them. Well. So that was an okay session photographically. I have some questions about whether the shutter, tape shutters on the canisters, it kind of moves and vibrates the canisters too much when I open them, so I'm going to have to work on that. But overall, I think it was okay. So what I did this time versus the initial test that I did with the Harman direct positive paper is I rated it at the same ISO speed of 8, but I pre-flashed the paper in my darkroom before loading it in the cameras. And um, I wanted to see what that would do in terms of the uh, pictures I get. So I would say my experience with this uh, round of shooting with these nine cameras was a little bit not quite as satisfying as the initial test. One of the reasons was because I was having problems with my light meter. I have this older Gaussian Luna Pro F light meter and um, it has intermittent electrical connection problems on the round dial and the push button on the side where you, you meter the scene. And there's also a green test button. You have to kind of fiddle with those buttons in order for it to get a good reading. And so I'm not quite sure if my metering was correct. The other thing is um, it looked like I overexposed quite a bit of the pictures. They just didn't have the dark shadows that I really like in that paper. I'm not, not sure if that's because of the pre-flashing, because I gave it the same amount of pre-flashing that I normally would in the past. Um, my development was all pretty consistent with what I've always done. Same chemistry, dilution, temperature, and time. So, um, And then the other problem I had was <coughs> when the cameras are sitting on their base, 
pulling off the tape, it moves the camera. And I haven't been able to figure out how to, how to uh, open the shutter without moving the camera. I'm thinking maybe instead of having the, having the tape crosswise to the circumference of the camera, maybe having the tape vertical with the flap on top so that when you pull it down, you're pulling it against the base instead of moving it. And I'm going to have to experiment with that uh, to see how, how to change that. But it seems like I had at least one shot that was definitely blurry uh, due to just motion blur and stuff. So there's some definite learnings there. So one of the other reasons why some of these pictures might have been overexposed is because the, these cameras on average have a focal ratio of about 120 and I was metering at 128, f128. Now theoretically there would be a correction factor of around about 0.9 something which which I should have applied to the exposure times but I basically just referenced the exposure time for f128 on the meter so I was actually overexposing a little bit because of that. Um, it is convenient to do that because you don't have to pull out a calculator every time you want to make a, ca a calculation of your exposure. So maybe in the future what I'll do is I'll simply dial in a slightly higher ISO for the paper and rate it at 128 and that might compensate for it. Using these curved film plane cameras is very interesting. It's much different than a flat film plane camera. If you're used to a box camera or a view camera of any kind that takes flat film, uh, it, curved film planes are very interesting because the center of the image, um, the kind of central third part of it, does at times kind of look like a flat film plane camera, but it's the edges where as the paper curls around that things get thrown out into the corners at weird angles. Um, I find that it helps to get closer to your subject than you think you should because those curved film plane cameras just intrinsically have a wider angle of view. Um, now one of the other areas where I think I can improve on the overall usability of the system is I'm not really sure if I actually like this carrying box system for transporting these. So because it's flat and wide I put it in the bottom of my backpack and it takes up a lot of room and if it gets turned over they're all going to get spilled out. Um, I'm primarily carrying, you know, carrying the tripod, a lightweight tripod with the, f the flat metal head to attach these to. And I wonder if it wouldn't be better just to have a different carrying system, maybe even a tubular system of some kind that attaches to one of the legs of the tripod that holds the canisters in place. Something like that to make it a little bit more usable and easy to get to. I don't want them to be exposed to bright light as, you know, direct light if I can avoid it just because the possibility remains that there might be some light leaks through the caps or whatever. But yeah, this, this box is a nice storage system. I just don't know if it actually works good in, in the backpack. Um, obviously I haven't made a lid for it. Maybe I just need to make a lid that slips over it and then I can, I can just throw it in the backpack any old way. That's probably what I should do first of all. So, it, you know, these pinhole camera projects are always a work in progress. You're always kind of figuring out uh, things, new improvements. And uh, that's what makes it fun, continuous improvement, always having new ideas. What I'd like to do with this nine camera pinhole camera set is something more like a long-term project, not just going out taking random pictures. Um, today I went to one of the city parks in Albuquerque that I like to go to. It's called McDuffie Park, but it's known as Hidden Park because it's bordered on all four sides by the backyards of houses and you have to walk into it via uh, trails. So there, you can't park at it directly, it's hidden. And then I went over, in the, in the same part of town, I went over to the Knob Hill part of town. So I guess you could say that I'm kind of documenting the Knob Hill part of town with this particular session of pictures. But I don't really know if that's a true project yet. So what I'm going to do in the next round of pictures with this is, first of all, I don't think I'm going to pre-flash the paper. Or if I do, I'm going to give it about half of what I normally do. Secondly, I'm going to give it the same 
Uh, I'm going to give it the uh, compensation for its focal ratio, the X value, so to speak, the 0.9 multiplier. And I'll probably just apply that to the ISO of the meter when I meter it. Um, and then I'm thinking, because most, I mean, th I think all of the shots I took on this session were reflected light readings. I'm really thinking I'm going to use in incident light read, incident metering. My initial test round of pictures that I did last week, I did a combination of both incident and reflective, and they both came out pretty good. So I'm thinking I'm going to try incident reading and then just do, a, do an adjustment on the meter for whether the subject matter appears to be a little bit darker than average or lighter than average and see how that goes. Um, but this, these kind of metering decisions are not unique to pinhole. These are the kind of decisions you kind of do with any kind of film photography. Uh, is just knowing that your meter is always trying to give you medium gray and you have to kind of interpret for the meter what the subject actually is. So those are the main things I'm going to do. And then figuring out how to open the, the shutter without moving the canisters. I'd like to uh, take a look at each one of these uh, prints now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus this old lens to as close as it'll be. Then I'm going to put each print up to the lens and we'll talk about it. So let's start with the first one, which is actually picture number nine. Okay, so this is taken at Lesman's Music Store on Lomas near San Mateo. And it's obviously overexposed. There's a mural on the side of this building, but it's really too bright and I actually should have gotten closer. I went to McDuffie Park for the next sequence of these. This is McDuffie Park and this nice old tree. This, this one came out pretty nice. That's a pretty nice picture right there. This next one, I believe, was a seven second exposure. And it's a tree with an interesting backyard wall next to it. And what the problem with this image, of course, is that it's blurred and the camera moved midway through the exposure or as I was opening up the pinhole because of the tape. So that's kind of a bad shot there. That is the same tree with the backyard wall thingy that's kind of interesting. Okay, the next one is just a building in Knob Hill that's field and frame, which is a film production place. And again, I'm not used to the wide angle. You, you can't hardly even read the field and frame sign, so I should have been much, much closer. Okay, this next one was a mural in the alley next to the Flying Star Cafe. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, the shaded paving on the alley is pretty dark so you know I could have gotten a little bit less exposure and gotten the face a little better but then everything would have been much darker down here but it's about as good as can be expected I think considering the the extreme lighting conditions okay this next one is a mural in an alley now this one the meter the meter told me to do like 45 or 50 seconds I think I did 40 seconds and this is kind of a girl bikini kind of figure mural and then there is a dumpster in the foreground with graffiti and then a front of a car. Um, I didn't get the dark shadows that I wanted. This is a little overexposed. I would have probably should have taken this down to maybe 30 seconds or less but it's an interesting picture nonetheless. And this was the last picture I took that today. So anyway this is uh, just the back of a condo with a bunch of gas meters and pipes and plumbing and I think that's a pretty cool shot. I like that. So that was an interesting time of uh, pinholing today. And I think uh, the results are OK. I got a few pictures that are overexposed and one that's blurry. But other than that, it's kind of promising. And um, I really do like these small size uh, pictures that fit in the palm of your hand. I do have an idea for how I might want to display these or frame these. But I'm going to save that idea for another day. In the meantime, you have yourself a great day. This is Joe Van Cleef.